welcome back to the Fiber, Floss, and Fiction podcast. Uh, my name is Anne, and today is December 20th, 2022, and I'm back for another podcast update. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, it is the solstice season here the next day or so, um, and obviously holiday season. So hope everybody is celebrating in whatever way and with whatever holiday they choose to celebrate, um, and that things are well in your neck of the woods. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back, and thank you for choosing to spend some time with me again. And if you are a brand new viewer, welcome. I hope you find some fun things here to check in with me about, and you'll consider hitting the subscribe button. Today I've got my usual stuff. Um, knitting and yarny things at the beginning, books in the middle, and then cross stitch at the end. I will, as always, put timestamps and the little postcards kind of in between each of the sections. So if there's something that interests you less, you can skip through and just watch the parts that you are interested in. Um, let's see, not much going on around here. Uh, we're having a very quiet holiday season, just my husband and I, which is great. Um, makes both of us happy just to have some time at home and quiet things. Um, we were supposed to go away on a trip, uh, kind of the first full week of December, and my husband has had a lot of business travel, will be having a lot of business travel, so we, we decided actually not to go because he was pretty much sick of being on a plane and we thought we would reschedule. And as that turned out, it was just fate, kismet, whatever you want to call it. Someone was looking out. Um, the Tuesday, two weeks ago now, that we were supposed to have traveled, uh, my elderly cat uh, got up from her nap and had suffered a stroke. So she limped through a couple of days and, um, it was obvious that she was not going to regain any function, really. She couldn't stand up and um, certainly couldn't walk. And she was very dizzy or at least something was, was wrong neurologically. So that would have been the day we left. And I'm just really glad that we were here instead. And that was not something that either my pet sitter came over to find or we were trying to manage last minute. I mean, we'd already decided we weren't going to take the trip. So it was good because we were home. She was able to be at home. And um, yeah, so we're all just kind of getting used to that new normal. Um, our dog, who's eight, has actually kind of been the mopiest about it. Um, I mean, I know she didn't totally understand what was going on, but um, she's never not had a cat to boss her around, so this has been quite the adjustment for her. Um, but anyway, so we're here, we're just having a very quiet, sort of stay-at-home kind of holiday season. Um, but that means lots of time for crafty things and reading, so that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. Um... I still have a 2023 plans video that I want to make, and I'm hoping to get to it next week, but it may not be until the first week of January. So we'll just, we'll see how all that works out with um, work plans and other things that we have, you know, going on just for holiday celebration things. So more to come on that, but for today, let's go ahead and get started with knitting. So I only have three things to talk about in the world of crafty, yarny things today. Um, the first of which is a pair of socks that I'm working on. These are the Three Leaves socks, and as always, links to patterns and any other information in the description box down below. Um, I am participating in a group on Ravelry called Socks from Stash, and they have a monthly prompt to kind of help motivate you to use up something in your stash that maybe you wouldn't normally have reached for. And December's prompt was for a solid color sock. No pooling, no speckles, no multicolor, nothing like that. So 
Uh, Three Leaves by Paula Pereira is the pattern that I'm working on. These were originally in the 52 Weeks of Socks book, but are now also available as a download on Ravelry. So they're, um, they've got mostly twisted stitch patterns, but a little bit of lace, as you can see there. And they actually have three separate patterns, hence the name Three Leaves. So they have this um, kind of textured, cable-y looking pattern. They have um, a pattern on the very top of the foot, which I'll show you, show you in the one I'm working on. It looks, it's easier to see. That's all twisted stitches. And then it has this twisted stitch and lace pattern. And then the rest is stockinette. Uh, I'm knitting these from the toe up, which I do not normally do because I don't normally like how they fit, but I am doing them for this one because the pattern worked out better to, to keep it this way and not try to like reconfigure it. I did not have the mental bandwidth to do that either. So here's what we're doing. Um, I did put in the fish lips kiss heel as opposed to the, um, gusset heel that's in the pattern um, but otherwise have written these this is the smaller size uh, there's two sizes in this so this is the smaller size um, and then here is the second one and you can see this center panel of twisted stitches I think a little bit better on that so obviously the leaf, leaf pattern is on that um, I used Judy's Magic Cast On for the toe which I'm really happy with you can't really tell any different between one that was grafted and worked from the top down. Um, snugged up really nicely. There's a ton of different good tutorials if you decide that you want to give toe up socks a try. Definitely recommend that as the cast on. It's a little bit fiddly to get started, but once you kind of get your fingers to realize what the rhythm of it is, it's not too bad. So I have these done through the foot. I've got the heel turned and I've started on the cuff. I have two more pattern repeats and the ribbing at the top to finish on these. So um, working on those. Oh, and I should say the yarn is West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply in the colorway Pacific, which is just this pretty dark blue-green color. So... Uh, so those are in progress. Um, also still working on the muscle burr hat that I'm knitting for my husband. This is a pattern by Isolde Teague, and there's oodles of them out there. You can search the hashtag, search the project page. Um, it's a really great hat that you can use any weight yarn for. And you can cast on and get started and then check your gauge. So for those of you that don't like to or don't want to bother knitting a gauge swatch, you just pick needles you think will work and the yarn, cast on and, and get going. So um, if you saw this on social media, on my Instagram account, I actually wound up ripping back where I had started, this is going to be the lining, which is a cashmere blend and is really soft and warm. Um, because my husband wanted this to be a super deep um, hat, like having more of the brim to turn up. So let me see if I can make this happen and show you what I'm show you what I'm talking about. So the pattern is written, you can um, knit it so that it's just a slouch with the lining inside. You can knit it slightly deeper so that you can make it where the brim folds up like that. And he wanted this brim to be really deep. And you, so you can make this any length you want. And then there's where the lining is inside that darker green. So he wanted it so that it was a single color on the outside, even the turn up part, and then the inside would be this darker color. So I didn't have it quite deep enough to do that, but I have ripped back and he's tried it on. And so I'm in the final approach now, just working on, on the lining. So this top, what's gonna be the exterior color, is Sweet Sparrow Yarns um, 
Owl Base, which is a yak and merino blend in the colorway Changeling, which is gorgeous. And this would, this would be dyed on a natural color base, kind of a taupey brown base. And then the contrast that I'm knitting is some leftover Wooly Wonka Fibers Ayrton Sock, which is the Cashmere Superwash Merino in the colorway Forest Prime Primeval. So I'm just about there. Um, I think I have three more inches or two and a half more inches and then I can do the uh, decreases to match. And then this will all get folded inside itself and be done. So just working away on that. That's kind of my, that was my stress knitting, wait for vets, knitting, all that kind of good stuff. Then my final project that I'm working on is actually a crochet project, which is my advent um, box from the Suburban Stitcher. It's a uh, theme, the theme of it is quiet voices. So it's all kinds of very quiet, pale colors. And I am using sort of Bear's Rainbow Blanket, which is a free pattern from Pearl Soho um, that the original was done with fingering weight yarn held single in lots of different Koyogu colors. I'm doing mine using the sock weight minis that I got in the box held double. And I am only doing one round of um, border, this off-white border. So I have started joining squares together and this is gonna be a seven by seven block blanket. So I've got three across, so I'll have another four out this way. Um, I, was, I have been doing pretty good. I've kept up with all the colored squares. I originally was gonna join these, like butt these up together and I didn't like how that looked. So I had to go back for all the colored squares that I had done up and I'm adding this off-white border for all of them. So I have to get caught up on that and then I can keep keep going on the, the assembly line. Um, I'm using a zigzag join, which I really like. It has some good stretch to it. It's not very hard to work and I think it kind of blends in. I mean, it, it has a little bit of a ridge to it. If you can see that, um, it's really flat on the back though. And I think it, it works great actually between these blocks. The pattern has you hand sew them together and I didn't want to do that. So blocks with the zigzag attachment it is. So I'm gonna keep working on that. I'd like to try to get everything finished. The last package opens the 25th on Christmas day. I'd like to have all the blocks done and then hopefully the last few days of the month I can put a border on them. So we'll see if that's possible. Um, I will update you on that next time we talk. And then lastly, I just wanted to talk briefly. Um, I will go into this more whenever I can get my plans video done, but um, my plans for January are a little bit funky. I am going to be participating in Project Get Your Craft On, and that starts January 1st. Um, my friend Jalen, who I've known for a very long time, and we just recently reconnected because of YouTube videos, um, is hosting this with some other friends and it's a any craft you want but it's basically 31 days of starts uh, of various and sundry things in the month of January and I don't normally knit things like that I normally I have a couple of projects like a handful of things but I generally don't start a whole bunch of things um, but I'm gonna give this a try because I have the time to do it and I have all my projects picked out. Um, so that's gonna be what happens in January. So there'll be a lot of new starts. I have a mix of some smaller things, some mid-range things and some large, a couple of large things. So stay tuned, more on that to come with my plan video, um, as well as obviously the project starts as we go along in 2023. 
Okay, that's it for yarn things. Let's move on to books. So I have a fair number of books to talk to you all about. Um, I wasn't doing a whole lot of crafting when my cat was ill. Um, she just, the only thing that she really wanted to do was sit on my lap. So she sat on my lap and I read and pet her and we sat together. So I did get a lot of reading done um, and I will talk to you about those. Now I'm going to spend a ton of time on any of these particularly, just give you some high level thoughts and move on because there's six books to talk about. <coughs> Excuse me. First of uh, which is the second to last book in the Shadowhunter series by Cassie Clare. This is City of Lost Souls. Uh, again, this is the Lit Crate uh, set book. I have the set a whole set from the Shadowhunter series, which has these great painted edges and really cool artwork. Um, so this one is getting us almost to the end. This brings back the creepy character of Sebastian slash Jonathan, who is Clary's um, older brother. And um, it kind of advances the story of his relationship with Jace um, and Clary's now deceased father um, and sort of the evil things out in the world. Less demons than usual in this one. Um, again, I'm not going to give too much away because if you haven't read other books before this in the series, none of this probably makes any sense. Uh, young adult fantasy, um, one of my favorite authors. So one more book to read in the series, which we I will tackle with um, my friend Tosh. And we're doing a buddy read of the whole series. And actually, we're going to read some more Cassie Clare next year as well. Um, so one more book to go, which we'll read in January. Next up, I read this in like three days. Uh, this is Frederick Bachman's Bear Town. You might recognize the author. Um, he was He's the author of A Man Called Ove. And... Um, as well as other things. But this is the first in kind of a two series book that that is set in the town of Beartown, uh, which is a small town, super focused on hockey. And the town has um, a young man who's, he's an amazing hockey player and he's going to lead their team to kind of the national finals. Um, he's the golden boy who can do no wrong. And basically in this town, you're either someone who loves hockey or you're someone who doesn't love hockey, and if you don't love hockey, you're kind of an out outsider, um, outcast. Um, this was a hard book to read. I didn't know very much about it, so I went into it kind of blind. My folks sent me this and then the sequel to it, uh, which is Us Against Them over on my bookshelf, and which I will read, but this one tackles a lot of really tough topics. I thought it was going to be a little bit more lighthearted, but there's some pretty intense stuff in here and a fair number of triggers. So while I am recommending this book as being extremely well-written, um, another very accessible book where you just feel like you know the people in it, um, it's not an easy read and I don't think everybody will be okay with it. So a good read. I'm glad I read it. I really had a hard time putting it down. Um, but just be warned that you might want to read some of the synopses before you pick this up if you uh, have interest in it or if you've read others by him and you think, oh, I love it. like that author. I would read more by him. This one's different than A Man Called Ove. Still has just great bits of really dry humor um, fantastic character development and, you know, a really engaging story in the sense that it makes you think about things and it makes you be engaged with the characters, even if you don't like all of them. Okay, so that's Bear Town. Um, the next book I finished is called Written in Bone by Sue Black. This is a book that talks about forensic pathology. The author is a forensic pathologist uh, who worked for Scott, worked for the University in, of Edinburgh 
as well as the Scottish and sometimes other areas police forces. She's been called in as a consultant in a number of cases that are um, missing persons or murder cases or if they've found bones at a particular construction site, a lot of times she's called in to identify the bones and to help facilitate the carbon dating. So um, very interesting book and she breaks it down chapter by chapter based on the, the part of the body, like which of the bones you're talking about, the skull, the spine, the long bones and so on and so forth. I found it very interesting, but I question a little bit who the audience is for it because there's actually a fair amount of like medical technical terminology in it. Um, there's obviously some case studies. So if people who have met a violent end is not your cup of tea, this is definitely not the book for you because it's all about identifying who people are from their bones. Um, I feel like it could have been a little bit lighter on the science terms um, to make it a little bit more engaging. I love this this branch of science. It's probably what I would have done if I had been at all good at science or math, which I'm not. Um, so I really enjoyed it, but I, I don't think it's necessarily the most accessible book to read. And it, it is nonfiction, I should say that. Um, but I enjoyed it. So if that's one of your niche interests, then you probably would enjoy it too. She has another book out that came out in, I think, 2018 that I think might be a slightly lighter read, although I haven't read it, but just based on the reviews. So if you're interested in that, um, in that topic, that might be a, a good title for you to pick up. I also finished a book uh, on audiobook called The Book of Unholy Mischief by L. Newmark. I'm going to link all of my, um, the Storygraph app. I'm going to link all the titles down below so you can read more of the synopses of these. Um, this book is historical fiction. It is set in 1498 in Venice, and it follows the story of a young man who is taken off the streets by the, the chef who works for the Doge. Um, the chef is a very um, well-educated man who is interested in trying all kinds of, you know, different things in his sauces and his cooking. Um, and this, this sort of street urchin that he's um, taken under his wing, he's grooming to be his heir. And so the book is filled with these amazing descriptions of food as well as renaissance era venice um it ties in with some of the politics that were going on with the borgias the doge is in bad health and he is looking for the secret to if not improved health even beyond that to like eternal life and so there is a book that is has been purported to have this information in it so he is sending out his spies the police to track down people of learning and try to find this book. And the young man begins to suspect that his mentor, this chef, who is well-read and well-traveled, knows something about this book, um, maybe where it is, and he's conflicted between trying to find the book and turn it in for the reward money and the loyalty that he now feels to this man who's basically adopted him. Um, I love this one. I thought it was a great, fun book. It brings, you know, late 15th century Venice just springing off the page to life. Great descriptions. The characters are wonderful. Um, does just a, a good job of giving you enough of the history that you understand some of the politics that were going on in the different political factions without it being really dry. It, it was, you know, kind of a book filled with adventure and learning. And I thought that the narrator of the audiobook did a great job. So I really enjoyed this one. If you like historical fiction, um, I, I mentioned The Birth of Venus in a couple of reviews ago. Uh, that one is very similar in feel to me 
to this one, The Book of Unholy Mischief. So if you liked that book, you probably will also enjoy this one. Okay, then two more books to talk about uh, are the ones I'm currently reading. Uh, nope, don't have them with me. The first one is another audiobook I'm almost done listening to called Atomic Habits. That was recommended to me by a number of people. It is a self-help book in the sense that it talks about how to how to set up better habits and how to break bad ones. Um, I, I had a number of people recommend it to me though as a good book for business. So I'm re listening to it for that. Um, almost done it. We'll report on that next time, but very well written um, and read by the author himself, which is kind of kind of a nice addition. And then I just started a book called The Deadly Hours, which is historical fiction. It's an anthology, but it's very creative because it takes four different authors, um, three of whom I've read and enjoyed that kind of do historical mystery type book series. Um, and each of them is telling the story of this watch that has a mermaid engraved on it throughout kind of each century starting in the 1730s. So I, like I said, I just started that one, but it sounds really intriguing. And since I already know three of the authors, three of the four authors are ones I've read and liked, um, you know, two thumbs up is my guess is I will enjoy that one as well. So that's kind of my mind candy book that I'm reading over the break. Um, so I will link everything below. Um, if you have interest in any of those that you want to kind of check out some more information about the plot. So overall, a really good couple of weeks for reading. And I think I'll probably have a few more books finished before the end of December, ready to kick off a bunch of reading things uh, come January 1st. So we'll go on and talk about cross stitch next. And then finally, let's talk about cross stitch. Um, I have continued to be working on a long winter's nap. This is, um, actually, let me show you the picture first, sorry. This is the ornament version. It is um, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs and artwork is by Donna Gelsinger. So this is the one that's, it's about 12 by 12. 300 by 300 stitches in a circle. So I've been working on this since the beginning of the month. And here is where I am. I started the month off, um, like draw a line straight up here. This is my marker, my little truck needle minder. So I basically have done all of this, which is about half a page, I would say. Um, Really enjoying working on this. Love the detail on it. I I just think it looks amazing. All of the baubles, the things on the tree and his beard look amazing. The sweater actually is not a super hard stitch. It's got relatively limited colors in it. So it's pretty easy to, you know, work several threads and kind of keep, keep moving over. Um, this is the bottom. So once I come across, I think it's to about here, um, it'll start to curve back up on this side. So this, this set of stitching got me to uh, over the 40% mark. I'm at 42 and some spare change percent right now. Uh, I certainly won't get this done between now and December 25th. I'm going to work on this through... Christmas Day, see how far I get, and then it'll probably go away until some point next year, but I have really enjoyed working on this one. It's been very soothing to work on all of these reds and um, this very dark section right here. So I need to finish up his hand if I can and keep working this way. That's my current goal. Um, and start to see the cat emerge. So this will be back on my uh, frame to work on some more, uh, continuing on the rest of this month. Um, I had talked briefly about some of the plans that I had for 2023, and I am still going to have my focus piece be Winter's Encounter, and 
work on that at least two weeks out of every month next year. Um, I'm going to also continue the rotation where I, for the other pieces, the other full coverage pieces that I have, I'm going to work on those. The huh, Let's try this in English. The remaining two, two weeks of each month, we'll see one of the other full coverage pieces out. So that has not changed. Uh, I am thinking that 2023 will be all full coverage, but looking ahead, I know this is way down the road in 2024, I am going to probably bring out some of the smaller, smaller, like little cushiony type things that I've done, like that one right there, that's part of the Brenda Gervais um, season. It's it's like a monthly series where each one of them, I can't remember what it's called, but that one. And then this one that I did with the cat and the dog that I finished last year, I think. Oh, and those two little small ones. So I have a fair number of those for Christmas. There's actually more out in the other room, um, but I don't have a lot for other seasons. I have more that are kind of fall oriented, but I have almost nothing for spring and summer. So at some point I do want to kind of get back to doing those because I love having them out. I love how this looks. I have that Mill Hill one that I converted to do it on fabric and not the paper. And of course the bigger drum thread winter garden that's back there. Can't remember who designed those two. Um, but anyway, there's there's like two halves of a house there that have little curling smoke. Um, so anyway, that's plans for down the road. But one thing that's going to be different that I was not planning on was, is a new start that I'm going to start uh, the 26th. After I finish working on the Long Winter's Nap, and that is a piece of art that I've actually had, uh, I bought quite a while ago from Heaven and Earth Designs, called Chesterton on Blue Quilt. And it is this one right here. And this looks very much like my girl Emma. If you follow me on my stitching, um, Instagram, she's my avatar, the little black and white cat, but same green eyes. And I just thought this one was perfect because she definitely was all about the yarn and crafty projects. So um, this will remind me of her. And it's not a very big piece. It's only 125 by 459. I think you can see that there. I am going to stitch it on 25 count. So it's it's only five inches wide by 18 inches high. Um, it's an older chart. The artist is Leslie Ann Ivory. Um, but yeah, so I love that one. And I think it will be actually a very fun stitch because it's got all of the different like patchwork hexagons in the background. Um, and then that big black and white cat. She was not big, but the black and white cat that takes up most of this piece of artwork. So I'm gonna start that on the 26th, that's my plan. I actually have that day off from work. Um, our main offices are closed for the Christmas holiday on the 26th and then on the 2nd, I guess it is. So, uh, so that's my plan for stitching things. Um, I think that's it for me this go round. I was trying to get this done and not have it be over an hour. We'll see how I did once I put all the pieces together. Um, if you've made it this far, thank you all for joining me uh, to listen to me talk about my crafty things. Uh, of course, I hope all of you have some time off to enjoy the holidays or just spend some time with family, you know, however you choose to celebrate. And hopefully that involves some crafting, maybe some reading, maybe some of both. Uh, so I wish all the best for you all for the remainder of this year. If I can get my plans video done next week, um, that will be up as well. I may wait to post it till around the first, but if I can't get it recorded, you'll see it just after the first. Um, and then we'll kick off 2023. It's hard for me to believe that we're almost done another year. This year has gone by so fast for me. I don't know about for you, but it feels like it's flying by. 
Um, yeah, let me stop. Let me stop blithering and just say happy holidays to everyone. I am grateful for all of you, my friends who choose to come and spend some time with me. Um, I wish you all the joys of the season and a very happy new year. I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.